In this video, we're going to look at optimizing host space performance in Pro Tools 11. To optimize host space performance, you'll want to go to the Setup menu and choose Playback Engine. As you can see, Pro Tools 11 offers a somewhat simplified Playback Engine dialog as compared to previous versions like Pro Tools 10. At the top of the dialog, you can see the Playback Engine selector. This is where you designate the audio engine for Pro Tools to use for recording and playback. The options available here will be determined by the type of computer system you're using and any additional audio hardware that you have connected. For example, in my list, you can see the Pro Tools aggregate I.O., built-in output, built-in line input and output, built-in digital input and output, AirPlay, and my Mbox 2 Mini. For most Mac users, you'll typically be set to the Pro Tools aggregate I.O. Next we have the Playback Engine settings. The first one you'll see is the hardware buffer size. This setting determines the number of samples that are processed at any given time by the computer's CPU. In Pro Tools 11, this setting only affects tracks using the low latency processing domain. That means that the majority of your playback tracks will not be affected by this setting, and we use a separate buffer that maximizes system performance. Tracks that are impacted by this setting include tracks that are being used for recording, hosting virtual instruments, or monitoring a live input you generally want to choose the lowest possible setting that does not cause any host processing errors. The next setting you see allows you to ignore errors during playback and record. Generally, you don't want to enable this setting because it may cause clicks and pops to occur during the record process. However, if you're in a situation where you're finishing up a project in the middle of the night and you just have to get one more recording pass done, then this setting may come in handy. Next, you'll see the dynamic plugin processing setting. When enabled, this setting maximizes plugin counts by dynamically reallocating host space processing resources as needed. This means that plugins only use CPU processing power when they are actually processing an audio signal. Next, you can see the video engine setting. Enabling this setting allows you to play back a huge range of QuickTime videos, as well as avid high def and standard def video formats on Pro Tools video tracks. Finally, in the disk playback section, you can see the cache size setting. On a standard Pro Tools system, the only setting available here is normal, which is the optimum cache size for most sessions. However, on Pro Tools HD systems, you can choose a larger buffer size that Pro Tools can use to cache audio to RAM. The maximum size available reflects the total amount of RAM in your system, minus 4 gigabytes. We'll discuss these larger cache size settings in more detail in a future video. So that's an overview of how to optimize host space performance in Pro Tools 11.